Well, hello, old friend. N4H and H here, and the uh, Yesu FT DX 5000 MP Limited has returned from Yesu, and uh, it is indeed working now. The uh, failure was, uh, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, uh, I had some RF apparently get in the shack and came in on the cat cable, and it disabled the functionality. Uh, let me let me show you up here, of. Uh, of, of uh, you see the frequencies moving up there. HRD could no longer track it. And uh, you look over on the right there, you see the arrow moving up as I'm moving the VFO on the rig. So it's all working again. And of course I can, uh, I can change frequencies on the uh, oops, Ham Radio Deluxe interface here. I'll go there and show you. And look, the radio's tracking. So it's all good. Back in uh, back in business, I haven't made any contacts with it yet. I have done a little testing. So uh, I'll catch you on another video using. Oh, by the way, uh, so I just unpacked it. Look at this. Uh, this was the outer box that I had shipped it to Yesu in, and then there are the boxes that uh, go inside of the. Uh, of the outer box that the radio goes in. There's the box for the SM5000, which I've, oh, I didn't send, but uh, had it stowed and got it back out. So we're all good to go now. Man, it's great to have this receiver again. Just such a magnificent receiver. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I had saved all of my settings, memories and whatnot, and all even settings that you do in the... Um, uh, in the menu here, you know that menu, and I reloaded everything using um, my RT Systems uh, programming software. If you're familiar with them, uh, let me show you here. So the FTDX 5000 programming software. Let me bring it up. So the one thing that I'm noticing so far, I said one thing. Uh, one thing that I have noticed so far that did not reload were my CW memories that I have programmed to use with the uh, remote here. So interestingly enough, I guess those don't back up. That's okay. I just keyed them back in with my Kent pedal, uh, paddles. And um, so it's all reloaded now. Anyway, wasn't a big deal. There's only five of them. Okay, so I uh, just thought I'd let you guys know the FTDX 5000 is back and... Uh, I'll be shooting some more videos with it as well as um, I'm overdue. I'm going to be shooting a video about that guy right there, the uh, Elecraft uh, KPA 1500 Legal Limit Amplifier. And uh, that guy just got back from, from Elecraft a couple weeks ago. Um, had some sort of a failure when I went to 160 meters and um, they said that failure was with was the gate of one of the LD MOS transistors. There's two of them in there, and uh, so the finals. And they've made some mods and improvements, and uh, they say that it should be much more robust now. Um, basically, it was uh, so much gain on the it's 80 and 160 meter bands. So they put in some uh, gain flattening resistors to uh, knock that down. Essentially what that means is this thing would give you a legal limit with about 30, 33 watts. So you're going to have to run a little bit more power to get legal limit on the high end of the, uh, you know, up around 10 meters and also on the low end at 160. Uh, but it protects the gate of the transistor a little bit. So I'll be shooting a video about that guy soon. It's a handsome fella and boy, when it works, it works well. Okay, uh, 73 for now from N4. Eight, and you, Oh, let me say one more thing. And you see that guy down there, that AL80B? I had just taken that thing off the desk and put it in its box and put it in a closet when the KPA 1500 went down on me. So, eh, call me, call me crazy or whatever, but for a while the AL80B is going to stay right there just in case I need him. All right, 73 for now from N4 H&H. &H.